السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمد يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلم السابقين وقائد الود المحجدين والشفيع المذنبين والسيد ولد آدم أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الأرض الميامين وأصحابه نجوم الدين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم ألهمنا وجدنا وعلم شرور أنفسنا أما بعد brothers and sisters إن شاء الله I'll try to explain the differences you know in simple way you know between the Holy Quran and the Hadith of Qudsiyah and the ordinary Hadith came from the Prophet Here firstly you have three different structures three different style given by one person which tells us you know that this is impossible to be human made this is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said okay and this is one of the miracles of the Prophet because we know we don't know about any speaker about any writer or about anyone of that regard that he have three different structures you know at the same time you may have it in different times you know you may have the person who change from one time to another but to have them at once you know come uh, uh, with each other you know uh, from the beginning of the revelation till the end of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu as the level, human level, it's impossible to have it as such. And you may look at it firstly as a signal, you know, of a miracle, you know, done by him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have another point which may be much more important for some of us, you know, to try to understand the case. What is it? Okay, uh, first I'll go by the definitions, you know, and then I try to explain the benefit, you know, in my view. Be sure, may, be sure that whenever we speak about the benefit, I'm speaking about my level, you know. I'm not speaking about the real benefit, you know, or the real wisdom, why it was done, you know. I'm speaking about my understanding. And there's significant difference, you know, between my understanding, you know, and the reality of it. The Holy Quran is the wording of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, and no one has the authority to change any letter in it. It has been transmitted, you know, literally from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, I'm not going to go in the details, you know, how is it and the, the, we believe that the speech is one of the attributes you know, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not going to do, go in the further detail, you know. And that one, it's quite, not old, it's eternally, you know, all from the beginning. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of his attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are as him, you know, in their time. Then we have this manifested to us, you know, in a physical form. What do I mean by physical form? When you write the Quran or when you have a book, an anything book is going to be shown, you know, in physical form. When you uh, decide it, you are going to have it in the phonic form and many other, you know, aspects or, or many, many other possibilities. Okay. So here, for me, there is significant gap between this, which I look at it as creation, the paperwork, or the, the voice, my voice, or whatever, and the, the attribute of Allah subhanahu That's why that smart Indian Muslim person, when he was asked, is the Quran better or the Prophet is better? 
He said, if you mean by Quran, the attribute of Allah, the attributes of Allah, they are better than the Prophet If you mean by, by, by this, you know, this paper, you know, or the phonic one or whatever, the Prophet is the master of all creation, and this is a creation. You got this point? And he has very smart answer to this particular thing. So here, what I'm trying to say, you have the old attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the word old is not that good, you know, eternally old, okay? And it has been manifested to us, you know, in this form. No one has the authority or the uh, permission to change even one letter in them, you know. Even the Prophet himself, he said, when they have some argument about qiraat or a style or how they are going to recite some of the Qur'an, what did he say, sallallahu He said, Hakaza unzilat. And he did not relate it to himself, he related it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way it was descended, okay? And this is uh, applicable for all portions you know, of the Holy Qur'an. They are going to be as such, that mean the meaning the literal language, you know, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was in Arabic la la language, you know, the, the uh, creation that we have it manifested, you know, among us, ourselves, you know. For sure, the old attribute is before the Arabic language and before all of this business. You have another style or another structure, which is Al-Hadith Al-Qudsi. This is according to many scholars, you know, maybe correct, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, perhaps I'm wrong. The meaning given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wording or the, let's say, the one who said so is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the structure of the wording done by the Prophet subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, that's why you have many of these, we call them a hadith qudsiyah. Why? Because we say at the beginning, قَالَ Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay? This, the, he is speaking about himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the structure of the words was done by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, okay? By definition or by other ways, you know. Here, the Quran, one of the things that differentiate between Quran and hadith qudsi, the Quran, all of it, from the beginning till the end, it has came in one style, which is what we has described in Bukhari, salsalat al-jaras, like bell ringing, okay? This style, which was one of the heaviest revelation to come to the Prophet and through the angel Jibreel, the Prophet had different angels, you know, come to him, you know, but the whole Quran came through Jibreel, and in this style, you know, of this heavy revelation given to him. Again, he has eight or more, some people may reach by them 30 or more, you know, of different style of revelation, you know, but all of the Quran came in this style. Whereas I cannot say about Hadith Qudsi, all of it, you know, came by this style or that style. It, it's under the possibility. I cannot say about Hadith Qudsi, all of it, you know, it came through Sayyidina Jibreel because I'm quite sure now that a, an angel descended, you know, uh, the, the first time you have this angel, you know, shown up, you know, in the, in the earth and the Prophet ﷺ described him that the head of his belt, you know, equal to the Holy Kaaba, a very large one, okay, and he gave him this message from Allah, which, yani, is almost similar to Hadith Qudsi, do you want to be a prophet and king, or you want to be a prophet and servant. He gave him that choice, gave the Prophet ﷺ the choice. This is direct message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet through that angel who is not Jibri. So now I'm quite confident that not all revealing, uh, not all Ahadith Qudsiye, they have been revealed in the same style. It's still under the possibility, you may have some of them, you know, revealed by Sayyidina Jibreel, some of them revealed by other things, you know, or written, okay? So here, Al-Hadith Al-Qudsi, that's why, since it was the structure of the Prophet Wasallam, here, I don't know how to, yeah, this has been criticized when I said it, you know, but I still believe in it, you know, that many scholars, you know, of narrators, 
they said the one who have the complete knowledge, you know, of the different meanings, you know, he has the right to change one word by another. You know. That's why in a hadith Qudsiyah and in the ordinary hadith of the Prophet you are going to find different narration with different wording, you know. And this is, we call it in Arabic, al okay. And this is make main difference, you know, between the Holy Quran and the hadith in the, uh, al hadith al Qudsiyah. Why? Because the, the Holy Quran, no one has the authority to change any letter. Even the Prophet ﷺ, when he has di had this dispute among the companions, he did say, as I'm going to repeat myself, he said, Hakaza unzila. And he related it to, the, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not relate it to himself. You know. Whereas the structure, when it comes from the Prophet ﷺ, then you have other human, you know, may change some wording, you know. And example, uh, you have this famous hadith, من كذب عليه متعمدا فليتبوى ما قاده من النار. There's one narration, من قال عليه ما لم أقل. Same meaning, different wording. Okay. In Quran, you cannot have this. Okay, you cannot have uh, same meaning with different wording. Okay. For sure, in Arabic as any other language, you may have vocabulary, you may have some wording, you know, which are uh, felt, you know, by one way or another, they are equal to the others, you know, but you cannot change, you know, you don't have the authority. Even the Prophet is this smart answer when he said, Hakaza Uzilat, just not to, to tell about himself, you know, only to, to let, teach everyone that you don't have the authority to have any input in you know, the Quran. And this is one of the main problem, you know, for most non-Muslim orient or orientalists. And I'm sorry to say, even some Muslim scholars, you know, this idea, it's not that clear, you know, in their mind. But for the reciters of the Quran, Qurra al Quran, it's quite clear, quite obvious, you know. They, it's out of discussion, you know. But some other specialized uh, people, you know, or scholars or whatever you want to call them, I'm sorry to tell you, sometimes you have some comment, you know, about it, which you feel that this person, the idea is not clear in his mind. And please, please make it clear in your mind, okay? When you say Qira'at al sabr when you say Qira'at uh, al-Ashr, when you say Qira'at Nafi'un, no one has any trivial or single input, you know, in this, you know. That's why they put three conditions or three criteria, you know, about the accepted Qira'ah. One of them, one of these three, to have the chain with the water, that's when you have massive, large number of people, you know, from large number of people all the way to the Prophet to the what? To who? To the Prophet. What do I mean when I say to the Prophet? That means Nafi' doesn't have any authority to, to change any word. Uh, any one of those large chains, you know, he doesn't have any authority to change. Because what did we say? We say to the Prophet. The, uh, this is one of the three criteria that they put, you know, to have this Qira'ah accent. When you go to the hadith al-Abi, ordinary hadith, this is, have different possibilities, different talks, different stories. Many of these hadith, the Prophet ﷺ speak about himself, and a Sayyidu waladi Adam, okay? And here, the speaker is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the, in the hadith al-Qudsi, the speaker is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the structure was done by the Prophet ﷺ. Here the speaker is the Prophet ﷺ, and the structure was done by him, okay? And uh, I believe, even though this is maybe controversial, that it's revealed from Allah. The meaning of the, all ahadith, all the prophetic tradition, they are revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, like when the Prophet said, "Ana Sayyidu wa Ladi Adam wa La Fakhr," why did he say "Wa La Fakhr" without proud? I feel myself, the Prophet said, too humble, but he was instructed by Allah. Said, "I am the master of all humankind." Okay, so here he doesn't have any other choice. He should say that I'm the master of all the humankind, but he said "Wa La Fakhr." I'm not speaking about it the way. 
the ordinary man who speak about it, you know, when I say I'm highly educated, I'm sheikh, I am this and that, don't think, you know, for one moment that the Prophet did say it, you know, from the same style or same standard that you have in your mind. That's why I said this is the meaning of it given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that this is, has been interpreted, you know, in some of the hadith of the Prophet that this is given from Allah inni wa utitu Qur'ana wa mislahu ma'ahu. When the Prophet said, I have been given the Holy Qur'an and uh, uh, something similar to it. What is this thing, you know, which is similar? You, the best way you know, to understand or un interpret this particular hadith, take it from the Qur'an. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Qur'an? وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ الْحِكْمَةِ You have the combination, you have the joining you know, between the Holy Qur'an and the prophetic tradition, you know. In many verses, you know, you have it uh, mentioned in that particular hadith that it, it, he was given it. What the meaning he was given it? That's been for a prophet, yani, uh, the way we understand it, it's like a revelation. And this is supported by the verse that I mentioned. That's mean anything the prophet, whenever he speak, that's mean this is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you should have, you should understand inside yourself, you know, that the revelation, they are not the same. You have different quality, you have different standard of revelation. And some of this revelation, which is Quran, no one, even the Prophet ﷺ show himself that he doesn't have the authority to change any, any letter in it. Okay, whereas the Hadith Qudsi and Hadith, the ordinary Hadith, you have different story. Now we come to this question. Now I have my input. I'm sorry, you know, I spoke a lot, you know, that we should have input, you know. Now I'm having my input, you know, I may be right or wrong, you know. Excuse me if I'm wrong. Why, why Hadith Qudsi? What's the benefit of the Hadith al Qudsi? Those among your people who attended my khutbah today, I concentrated, perhaps not the way I should be concentrated, about knowledge of in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or as Muslims, we should gain knowledge from uh, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should build up our knowledge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I I'm not here to argue. I, I believe, I have full belief, inshaAllah, that the best resource, you know, to get the knowledge about Allah is the Holy Quran. What's the problem with the Qur'an? We have a problem with the Qur'an, what is it? It's very majestic way, you know, of speaking. Many of us may not feel themselves, you know, eligible or ready to get it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His mercy, make one step down. Here, you have human, but great human person, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, speak about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. For, for us, you know, as humankind, this is going to make it much easier to understand Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Okay. I'm, I'm not here to speak, you know, about other subjects, you know, but even in fuqah, you know, you see the stepwise that the stepping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it, you know, you have the Holy Quran, general rules, uh, something maybe come in detail, then you have a Sunnah Nabu al Mutahara as a step down, you know, then you have the opinion of the companion, a step down, then you have the opinion of the Mujtahideen like Abu Hanifa, Malik, and Shah. You see how rich we are? We are too rich, you know, to have, to have all of these standards, you know, to make this, you know, well understood to us, to make this, 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 this close to us, you know. I'm sorry, perhaps I don't like this attitude, but most Muslims, they, uh, they look at Allah as something that just majestic, you know, and you should, uh, whereas when you have a person like the Prophet speaking about Allah, you feel this is humankind. For sure, it's not similar to us, you know, and he is a humanity because of revelation and other factors, you know, okay? But here, you have something closer to you. It's going to affect you more, okay? And we, we, we understand it. That's why the first one to take away, to choose the Ahadith al-Qudsiyah and make them in a book, 
was not Muhabbis. Was one person who is quite interested, you know, in knowing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You got this point? This is my reason, you know, behind it. I may be right or wrong. The, the Sheikh Muhyiddin, when he wrote this book that inshallah will start it tomorrow, some may ask, how come, yani, Sheikh Muhyiddin, he, mashallah, he has different, you know, uh, branches, you know, of uh, knowledge, and he was described that he is much more knowledgeable in all of these fields, you know, than the people, the specialized people in that particular field. But for us, for us, it's not, yani, well known that he specialized, you know, in Hadith Nabawi Sharif. Personally, I'm going to expect the first one, you know, to, to have this done, you know. One of the muhaddisin is going to choose those ahadith qudsiyah and take them away or have a book, you know, for, book, uh, for them or collection. Why this person he did so? I think because he, part of his specialty or one of the most famous specialty of his, you know, about knowledge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he found that this is going to be quite helpful for anyone to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much better. And for myself and for the audience, this is what I would like, you know. For this experience that we, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, you know, with it, you know, for the coming two days, you know. I would like, I look forward to know more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this perfect, excellent way done, you know, by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa okay. And with this perfect selection, you know, done by Sheikh Mahideen, I would like to, to have myself, you know, get closer, know more Allah, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is, inshallah, uh, if you come, you know, to the session tomorrow, inshallah, you are going to find it as such. You know, it's going to be quite helpful to help you to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much more. Don't misunderstand me. You have great verses, you know, the Quran. You have a chapter. Yani I feel the chapter of Surah Al-An'am all, all, almost speak about, about Aqeedah, to make you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much more. You have Ayat Al-Kursi. You have Surah Al-Qur'an, Allahu Ahad. You have many other areas of the Quran. Or I'm not exaggerating. I said the whole Quran will speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in direct or indirect way, you know, speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here, when you have... One step down, you know, to you, uh, this is going to ease up, you know, and, uh, on you and make you uh, understand it much more. The other point you know, about it, the Quran, generally speaking, go by summary. Okay? Whereas many, not all of these ahadith quotes, they are going to go in detail. We have this famous hadith, I think it's mentioned among these 40 hadiths, you know, which mentions Sahih Muslim, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed his people, you know, and it's really quite long and quite beautiful one, you know, narrated in Sahih Muslim. For me, I don't find such a text, you know, in the Quran speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's going to be much more summarized, you know. Some of those high sophisticated, sophisticated people, you know, they may derive from that version of the Quran much more meaning that I, I understand from that particular hadith. But for me, I enjoy my time you know, when I recite this hadith, when I speak up about it, when I give dares, when I give khutbah, you know, about it. I'm going to feel much more relaxed, you know, and much more happy, you know, to speak, you know. This is, and again, this is the second look, you know, the summary or the detail, okay? In a hadith Qudsiyah, when you speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, generally speaking, I'm giving you broad line, you know, not, uh, yani this is not, uh, perhaps it has some exception, you know, or not, or not uh, accurate, you know, all the time, you know, but the common way, the frame of it, you know, the broad line, that is going to be much more detailed, and this is, should be your expectation. That's why you find, uh, uh, and then, you know, much more detail, you know, about certain portions of the Qur'an or not even mention the Qur'an. The third point, uh, it's quite easy, you know, but uh, it's not well understood for some people. Some people, they feel that al-Hadith al-Qudsi, all of it, they are authentic. No. Hadith al-Qudsi, similar to ordinary Hadith. It may be mutawatir, 
maybe authentic, maybe sound, maybe weak, maybe weak, fake. Okay? The Quran, when you have the Quran in their standard, all of it is mutawatir. Gain the top, you know, of transmission. Massive transmission. Whereas Hadith al-Qudsi has been dealt with, you know, with the ordinary Hadith. And that's why you may, hopefully, in this collection we don't have, you know, but you may, otherwise, elsewhere, you may find fake Hadith or weak Hadith or some, or, 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 all of these levels, you know, we are speaking about, you know, in the ordinary Hadith, they are applicable, you know, for Hadith Qudsi. I think I'll stop here, you know, if anyone has any question, feel free to ask, you know, about whatever you want to ask. Could you give us some, like, could you give us more background about the three different styles that you spoke about, uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had together and all throughout his prophethood? I don't know the background of that. Okay. If I fully understood your question, you know, I'm sorry to tell you, some of the Orientalists, you know, they said that the Qur'an was made by the Prophet Okay. How by the Prophet? They said, this man, he met with the top of physicians, you know, in his time. The most edu highly educated, you know, physician of his time. The ha highest astronomical person in his time. The highest social uh, philosopher, you know, in his time. The highest uh, uh, Arabic speaker in his time. And I, uh, I'm not exaggerating. I have met with a Christian person. He told me. He told me uh, uh, thoroughly. He told me and all of this information. The Quran, the Prophet took it from Bahira. <coughs> So, and he was accused of Allah in his time, you know, we read in Syria and elsewhere, that he was accused that he gained this room. I challenge nowadays, not in his the time of the Prophet. Why did I say nowadays? Because nowadays you have better way, you know, of communication. You have the computer. You may reach, you know, the, the top, you know, in medicine or the top, you know, in astronomy or whatever, which was... In my view, at least, you know, almost impossible in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Is it possible nowadays to have such a book done by one person? I don't think so. Yeah, and those people who did say that this is Muhammad made Allah Masalli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, you know, they are fooling themselves, you know. Because this is Im impossible in our time even though we have the availability of these data, you know, much more than the time of the Prophet Then, let's put this assumption, you know, let's assume a person was successful in this time, you know, to have such a book. Is it possible that this book is going to last for 1500 years without any, anyone scientifically, you know, criticize one point in it? The Qur'an has been criticized a lot, you know, but all of those are not scientific, you see. Up till now, he keep updated, you know, nowadays, you know, some of those theories or some of those information mentioned in, inside the Qur'an, it was felt for among certain people, you know, or in short period of time that it's not right. And then they are going to discover later, later on, you know, that it was right. You got my point? And here, this is the, another miracle of the Qur'an, which is that to last 1,500 years, you know, without having anyone scientifically, in very solid evidence, you know, criticize this, this Qur'an. And here, you have two extraordinaries, not one. The first one, to have such a book, you know, in our time, which is impossible, I think uh, most of your people, or all of your people agree that it's impossible, you know, and then to have it for this long time, you know, long period of time, without any criticism. You know. 
That's why, in my, I, this is my person, I have heard from some Muslim speaker, they said, uh, for the Arab, the Holy Quran is the miracle, for the non-Arabic speaker, Sayyidina Muhammad is the, 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 the miracle. I disagree with this. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ has in his hadith that my miracle, he said, is the Holy Quran. And when he said, this is my miracle, this is for the Arabic and non-Arabic speaker. Okay? And, we, 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 and uh, uh, the, the other point which I would like to highlight here, many of the Muslim and non-Muslim, they may feel that the Quran is a miracle, you know, by the structure, by the way it was addressed to you know, me. That's mean, يعني, this, uh, يعني, uh, some of those famous writers, you know, or whatever. No, this is one part, you know, of the miracles, miraculous, you know, matter you know, about Quran. You have many others, you have scientific, you have social, you have religion, you have this, you have that. All of these matters, you know, when someone doesn't taste the Arabic language, it doesn't mean you know, that he is not going to taste it. So uh, uh, this is, uh, you may consider as introduction to your answer. If I want to come back to your answer, I'm going to say, any famous writer, or any famous novelist, or any famous poet, you know, to have in same time three, dif three different styles, you know, of way of writing or speaking, it's impossible. You may have three different styles for one person, but it's going to be in different areas, uh, areas or di different time you know of his life not in the same particular time it's almost impossible i'm sorry Ali. perhaps i don't know how good is this example you know i'm, go I'm going to give example about my myself you know those who come with me they feel that when i ask to be speak you know my speaking you know uh, this morning the khutbah yesterday day before yesterday, all all of them they go around something why? Because I am limited. I have some concern now. All of my talks or all of my speech, they are going to be erupted, you know, from what I feel, from my, my feeling, you know. But, the, but this is for sure, it's going to be completely different than when I spoke 10 years ago or 20 years ago. You got my point? Yeah, and here you may have different structure, you may have different style, you may have different expression from the one particular person, but this is going to take some time, you know, periods after periods, you know. But to have it in the same time, like the Prophet has three different styles, you know, in at once, you know, and uh, they, they come, all of them together, you know, from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is, I think, for humankind, it's impossible you know, to have it as such. I don't know if I make it more clear, you know, or more complicated. Are there names of the three styles? Or is the, the, the name of them, Quran, Al-Hadith Al-Qusi, and the Obligatory Hadith. They are the names of them. Other questions? What is the third one? The ordinary hadith. Okay. Yeah. So the reason that the Quran style is different than hadith Qudsi is because the wording comes from the Prophet The structure. It's not a miracle. Okay. You cannot say this is the wording of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. For the Quran, you may say this is the wording of the Quran. Of Allah, this is the wording of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Whereas for the Hadith Qudsi, most scholars they said this is the wording of the Prophet Sallallahu This is the structure of, done by the Prophet Sallallahu But he narrated from Allah Subhanahu Taala. And this you find it in Quran. How? You have let, let's put an example of it. So uh, Sayyidina Musa and Pharaoh, his story has mentioned the Quran frequently. You are going to feel the difference, you know, between what mentioned here and what mentioned there. Is the Quran liar? No. Giving you the meaning in different structure. And this is an indirect way for me, I understand from, from <coughs> it, you know, that I mainly read some of, not from the Quran, don't misunderstand me, from other stories, from other narration, you know, I may narrate it in different style when I serve the same, same meaning. Okay? 
Okay? But for Quran, no, I have I don't have the authority even to change one day to the money. Other question? Yes? The Quran is uncreated and it's um, and it's a uh, divine attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we read it we get exposure to the divine. So can you talk a little bit about that and also uh, how that may be different than let's say say the Musa and his exposure to Allah's words and the Prophet son, his exposure to Allah's words and why is it sometimes that when we read the Qudsi we feel actually that we're closer we're getting a more closer exposure I don't know. that's how I feel for me for my level it's too complicated uh, question firstly I would like to say how Sayyidina Musa or how Sayyidina Muhammad did, did it, I don't know, you know, because this is prophetic style, you know, I'm not a prophet, okay. For other things, yes, I thank you that you have expressed it very well, you know. Even though, in my mind, correct me if I'm wrong, we deal with the creation of the of that wording of Allah subhanahu wa We deal with the pages, we deal with the printed, we deal with the uh, voice, we deal with something of that. We deal, we deal when, when you have very nice piece, you know, of work, you know, done, you know, of the Quran. We don't deal with anything not created, in my belief. But what's the benefit of it, you know, if it's similar to the human made, be careful, I said similar, not exactly the same. One of the benefits that I found, and I mentioned it before, you know, for some people, you know, if I'm asked, you know, for this novelist, you know, work, you know, half page, you know, repeated 20 times, I get bored of it, I get fed up of it. I have repeated Fatiha thousands and thousands of times. Up till now, I feel I really need it, you know. I feel myself deficient, you know, in containing it, you know, or having the whole meaning of it or, of it or whatever. This is the way I understand it, this indirect <coughs> message, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that when you compare what has been sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to what you experience in your life, you know, about the talks, you know, or poem, or uh, uh, writing, you know, or novel, novel thing, you know, or whatever, you know, you are going to feel the difference. And that has been highlighted firstly by the Prophet when he said, وَفَضْلُ كَلَامِ اللَّهِ عَلَى سَائِلِ الْكَلَامِ كَفَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَى you are going to find this. You know. I give some certain example you know, of it. I don't know how accurate it is. When someone play, play basket, you know, they are going to compete with, uh, compete with each other, you know. Some may put, you know, the ball, you know, ten times, the other one eight times, the third one one time or whatever, you know. But when a, a, someone, you know, show up there, you know, and from one kilometer is going to put it in you know, the basket, regardless if he's turn his back away or do this or that. You know. Here, you feel you are faced with something extraordinary. This is not the usual rule of this life. And again, you are going to find the same experience when you try to recite some of the Quran. Perhaps this reminds me, you know, I don't know how important this, you know, but I have read it, you know. I think uh, some of your people, they are familiar with Maurice Pocay. This is a, a French, you know, physician. He spoke about the Quran. I read this story that King Faisal of Saudi Arabia, he want to have surgery done by Maurice Pocay. And that doctor, you know, he told the king, I have read the Qur'an many times, I did not find it change, you know, I did not find any change, you know, between the Qur'an and other books, you know, like Bible or whatever. He said, he answered him that, in what did he say? Have you read it in Arabic? He said, no, the translation. He said, try to learn Arabic, you know, and read it in Arabic, and you are going to feel the difference. 
And when he first you know, read it in Arabic, he felt the difference you know, between the structure. And what I'm trying to say, when you have something human made, it's not going to be equal to the, those structures you know, given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though, I'm not telling you, you know, in all of these structures you know, given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are our letters, they are our wording, they are our verbs, they are everything, you know, but here for sure you are going to find significantly unique structure. I'm going to give you another example of it, just pass through my like humankind, when he is alive and he's dead, is there a difference, you know? Physically, no difference. Medically, no difference. They said everything stopped, you know, that's what the, the, the physician, they said, you know. But here, I think the difference between, yani, it may be similar, you know, the difference between the Qur'an and the other word, you know, like the difference between the alive and dead one. I'm sorry, I've long answer, you know, because your question was too complicated for me. <laughs> Other questions? Yes? You went over some of the different ways of revelation for Hadith al-Qudsi. So you talked about Jibreel, you talked about sometimes it came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can you go over, like, the... Were there any differences in how Hadith al-Qudsi was revealed versus ordinary Hadith? And, you know, if it was whether it was just from the Prophet Sallallahu or Jibreel or any other form. So basically just going over the process of revelation for Hadith al-Qudsi specifically. Again, this is perhaps controversial issue. I'm going to tell you about what I believe. I believe the Prophet was given the authority to establish certain rules, you know, in the religion of Islam. And this is, we read it, you know, a few days, you know, about famous, of the, one uh, famous sheikh, and he mentioned the same wording, okay? I believe in this, you know, it may be controversial, okay? So here, when we say that the Prophet Sallallahu was given the authority to establish certain rules, you may find in some ahadith, it came from out the nature of the Prophet ﷺ and how he figured out he should handle this problem, this human problem, you know, or whatever of that regard. When we speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's going to be a different story. And it's going to be, in my view, limited much more, you know, to the revelation. Other questions? Between the ordinary hadith and the hadith yeah. Qudsi, I, mean, I think as as Sayyid Wali said, you know, that you are going to find yourself, those who are interested in knowing about Allah, loving Allah, they are going to find their heart shake, much, much more shaky you know, when, he, when they have the hadith Qudsi. But the structure, as Arabic structure, they are going to be the same. And this is, was done by one of the famous writers you know, in Arabic. He said, what's the difference between Quran and the Hadith? He has smart idea, you know, I don't know if he accepted it. He said, when you are hit with Quran, right away you are going to find yourself, you know, completely incapable of doing anything. Okay? Like when someone, you know, a, a boy, you know, is, uh, quite strong, you know, compete with the other boys, you know, and a, a person, you know, comes there, you know, to, to have this heavy lifting, you know, or whatever, is going right, right away, if he's wise, and yeah, that boy, you know, to have full submission to it. And this is your fe feeling, you know, about Quran, and this is what has been described by not Muslim, you know, Al Walid Bughira, what did he say? In Nahu Ya'lu wa la yu'ala ali wa na yahtu mu ba tahta. That's mean always you are going to find in the Quran the superiority. And this is may explain why 
it's not that easy to understand or to get along with all stations, you know, in the Holy Quran. Okay. Then th that particular writer, what did he say about the Prophet when you hear his wording, you know. Firstly, you feel yourself you are capable of doing it. When you try, you are going to fail. <laughs> you, you see the difference? Yeah. This is the difference, you know, between the wording of came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wording done by, you know, by the Prophet No more questions? Shall we stop here? You know, Jazakumullah khairan. I should thank everyone, you know, to, to listen to me. To be honest with you, I expect to have a lot of questions, you know, about these three points, you know. Apparently, they are quite clear for everyone. Alhamdulillah. I should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it's quite, quite clear because this is a very sensitive, you know, issue and this should be well understood, you know, by all of you people. صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم. جزاك الله خير. طيب يا رب السلام. So tomorrow's program inshallah 10 10 a.m. will start. Inshallah. And assalamu alaikum. So registrations are still open for tomorrow and Sunday. We are expecting close to 120 130 people. And uh, inshallah, we'll have the uh, program started at 8 or 10 a.m. Uh, inshallah, the whole program schedule will be displayed outside. And whoever has registered already, please come. And uh, we still have time. If you know, like if anyone wants to have questions or any other topics, we still have time. Mm -hmm. My container is small. You know. It's empty, you know, quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I have one question. Though. I okay. couldn't ask it. Go ahead. About um, the Quran being created, and uh, uh, we, uh, we, we talk about that subject, as well as on is this a policy going to be the same concept? Well, how do we understand it's a creator? What was the question? The question was, uh, in Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah, is the Quran created or not created, you know? I think I answer this question because that if you consider the Quran, the attribute, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa is not created, okay? When you... Uh, we as humankind, you know, we did not get in touch in any of these portions, you know, of the Quran except the created one, you know, as I said, the published, you know, the edited, you know, the, when you have this work, you know, on the wall, when you have someone recite the Quran or whatever, you know, and according to most of the scholars, this, all of them, they are creation. Okay. Uh, regarding Hadith Qudsi, I was about to say, that all of it created because the structure from the Prophet Then I figured out some of these information, you know, if they have been spoken by Allah SWT, don't ask me why because I don't know, okay? Some of them, they may be quite old, you know, and eternally old because this is the speech of Allah SWT which has been translated by this way. But it did not gain the high respect that we have to the Quran. Why? Because it was it did not reach us literally the way the Quran reached us. The total number of ahadith that we gather from the scholars It depends upon the selectivity of ahadith Qudsi. To be honest with you, in my mind, the Hadith Qudsi, that the one speak about Allah subhanahu at least three, four lines, you know. Some of those people who collect a Hadith Qudsi, they collect in them when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, yani, we have some of these a Hadith uh, about that person who was the last one to get out from hellfire and go to heaven, you know. Allah was asking, why did you do so or whatever you know? He considered this had as Hadith Qudsi because you have this short three wording you know, of it. So it's, it depends upon what your definition you know, of Hadith Qudsi. If you have this massive collection you know, of Hadith Qudsi like this person, I have a book you know, back in my library, library like this, you know. I, I'm sorry, I don't uh, 
remember the number, but roughly they are, they may, uh, maybe 600 or so, okay, by this, you know. But when you cut down many of those ahadiths that you have only one or two words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I follow, or whatever, you know, of this, the, the, this wording, you know, they are going to drop dramatically, dramatically to roughly 200 hadiths. Uh, this particular author, Shaykh Muhyiddin, he wrote 40, then add another 40 on them, then completed them to 100. And this is considered as the first book, uh, as a collection you know, of Ahadith Qudsi. Yes? Are there certain Sahaba that you narrated more Hadith Qudsi compared to the breakdown of Hadith in general? And the question, uh, the particular Sahaba, I haven't looked in this way. I'm sorry to tell you, I don't know. Okay? It may be, yani in the ordinary hadith, I look at certain Sahaba, they have some specialized field, namely Sayyidah Aisha, many of her hadith they are going to be related to women's side. Okay, Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik, many of his hadith related to the specialty of the Prophet or description of the Prophet. Okay, but as Sayyidina Abu Huraira, when I look at his hadith, I'm going to find them, you know, of all subjects, you know, collection of everything, you know. So here, I think this is very important, very good question, you know, but I'm sorry, I haven't yeah, looked at it, you know, in this way, perhaps, Tomorrow, when we have this ahadith, we may look at them, you know, see if any specific, you know, companion has uh, much more specialized, you know, in this ahadith than the others. Yes? Can you repeat the question? Yes. In other contexts, you spoke about the uh, defining the dates for the, for the ahadith. Yes. Uh, from the nature of the ahadith of Qudsiya, is this something easy to be done or not? And do we know? Roughly, whether there are contexts where the Prophet would say Hadith could see, or or Allah would reveal it to him and to say a specific incidents or context. The question is about dating the Hadith. An ordinary man, Subhanallah, he paid my attention to it. I uh, and I have been, you know, since then, you know, perhaps thirty years or so. Yani I have certain interest about dating the hadith, you know, which is not done by many uh, per persons. You know. uh, regarding a hadith of Qudsiya, you may have the date, but not from the text itself, either from the companion, because you know that this companion became Muslim you know, in this particular year, and when he said, uh, but I have heard the Prophet saying so, that's mean. Or if he said, let's say, on the pulpit, you know that the pulpit of the Prophet was established in year seven. Okay. Or if he said that after the battle of Hunayn, let's say, the Prophet did say so. So here you have other clues, other evidences that may give you a hint, you know, about dating of some of the ahadith. But. Uh, uh, in my imagination, you know, I haven't tried, no, but in my imagination, the text of the Ahadith Qudsi is not going to be as such. Whereas the text of the ordinary Hadith may give you a hint, you know, that this happened after this or that. Yes? Are, are there significant differences between the Ahadith of Madani or perhaps some in Makkah? Again, I may say, I'm sorry, I'm sitting here, but I may say, I don't know. But my feeling, this is feeling, not more than feeling. Generally speaking, when you look at the seerah of the Prophet most time of the Mecca, it was the hidden way. Even when Sayyidina Abu Dhar, he went to Mecca to become Muslim, you know, he had a hard time to find the Prophet so this gives me a hint or an idea that in the Meccan time, even though you have major events you know, happen you know, in the Meccan time, you have a massive controversy about it. Namely, Al-Isra'ul-Ma'raj. 
Islam, mm -hmm. some they said year five, some said, said year six, most they said year ten, you know. You have, even though, yeah, for me, this is very significant event, you know, in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, yet you have this massive controversy. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ, generally speaking, in Mecca, he used to have those measurements, you know, of hiding something, you know, or be or be hidden, you know, or by the companion or by some someone else. Whereas in the Medina, in Medina you have different story. I mean, everything was manifested, you know, quite obvious. The house of the Prophet ﷺ was quite obvious, you know. The way to get the, the Prophet ﷺ is going to be quite obvious. So that's why in my imagination, again, most of the events, you know, and uh, a hadith, they took place in Medina al Munawwara. This is in my understanding, okay? Personally, when you ask me to match the Madani Surah with the life of the Prophet ﷺ in Medina, for me it's quite easy. I try to make it for the Meccan Surah, up till now I don't know how to do it. You got this point? And here, I, I, I enjoy my time, you know, because I match many of these Madani Surah, you know, with the, with the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Whereas in Mecca, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not uh, able to know how to do it. Hmm. So, Samuel, we have a few questions from live stream on Facebook. Okay. Um, Why? So but first, perhaps it's better to, to come closer to make everyone you know, listen to the question. Okay. So the first question we have is, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا يَدْقُوا عَلِي الْحَوَىٰ about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Surah Najm. Taking this into consideration, what would, what would be the position of Hadith of Al-Qursi? I say, as I said you know, before, this is my belief, Quran, Hadith Qudsi and Hadith Adi, all of them, the meaning came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> but what's the difference between Quran and a Hadith uh, combining, you know, the Hadith Qudsi and the ordinary Hadith, that in Quran the structure was not done by the Prophet sallallahu and that's why he said, Hakaza Muzilat, whereas in Hadith Qudsi and ordinary Hadith, the structure, this is the language, this is the expression of the Prophet sallallahu And we have one more question. Um, Sheikh Abdullah Ali Ahmed says, can you add, uh, okay, the text we are using, what's the name of the... The, the, uh, the name of the text? Or? Yes. The name of the text, I think, is Mishkat al-Anwar. فِيمَا رُوِيَ عَنِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى مِنِ الْأَخْبَارِ Okay, this is what the name given, you know, by the author. Mishkat al-Anwar. Its name is Mishkat al-Anwar. And it's uh, 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 written in Arabic, it's written in English. I got a copy, you know, of it. Written in English, you know, from uh, Oxford in the UK. Because there's... there's uh, a group of people, you know, there, they relate them to that author, you know, and many of his books, you know, has been published, you know, there in English. So we have it in English text and we have it in Arabic text. Okay. Yes? Salam. Um, for some of us who, who came to Islam through the Qur'an, alhamdulillah, and through the, through the understanding of the, the nature of the Hadith of Allah, um, and seeing it confirmed in, in people, how do some see of it, you know, what? see it confirmed in the Ahl al-Bayt? You know, we see, we see the character of the Ahl al-Bayt, and we see um, that we have it confirmed for us, you know, that well, we also find ourselves, some of us who are awam, we're not scholars, we don't even know anything, we find ourselves in situations where we're, where we're confronted in groups uh, with, by atheists who, who quote a hadith that, that deviate from his mercy. Um, some of us said that would seem ridiculous to us. So we're wondering, how do we, how do we respond to, to people who quote these a hadith that, that, that deviate that to us sound ridiculous, but in a situation, it's a Dawah situation, so we're at our land, we don't know how to respond. Uh, 
if you permit me to broaden your question a little bit. Islam is a religion. You are going to find in it thousands and thousands of ideas or instruction. If I am the limited one, you know, I'm able to answer you for your question or for this point. I may, be, may not be as excellent, you know, in answering the other point. We are humankind. What do I mean by this? Personally, myself, Alhamdulillah, I am Muslim. I'm going to find those teaching, you know, given to me through the Quran or the Prophet. Some of them, I fully understand them. I fully love them, you know. And I'm going to do happy, you know, to practice them. The others, I'm not going to be as such. I may have some, not because they are deficient, because I am deficient. Okay? And that's why when the Prophet when he used to give bay'ah to some of his companions, what's the meaning of makra? That even if you dislike this, you know, you should go by it. To come to your question, since you have all of these items, you know, there, for me it's an endless list, you know. If you argue with this atheist, you know, about this point, if you convince them, you know, about it, they are going to bring another point. And when you convince them, they are going to be third one, and it's endless list, you know. That's why this happened to me, and this is the advice I give. Once I used to live, you know, in the U.S. when I had my medical training, training here. And one of our friends, you know, he, he was in one college, you know, I forget the name, you know, and there's some which is uh, compulsory and the other optional, you know, things, you know, to be taken. And he took one of them as a religion, you know. And that, uh, the teacher of that particular, you know, subject, you know, he called a rabbi, you know, to speak about Judaism. And they want someone to speak about Islam. And that person, you know, the, my friend, he assigned me to go. But he warned me that they are going to have many questions, you know, for you. <coughs> about divorce, about women, about this, about that, about that. Okay. And when I was about to start my talk, you know, Again, the teacher of that part, of my friend, he warned me that, don't feel uh, ashamed, don't feel sorry, you are going to be asked all of these questions. Okay. I tried in my talk to show them the greatness of Islam. How truthful is the Prophet How truthful is the Quran? At the end of the talk, how many questions did I receive, you know, about divorce and these issues? <laughs> to my surprise, not, near, not one question. You know. okay. What I'm trying to say, this is the way I work, you know. May, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it work for you and for everyone. You are not going to end, you know, when you try to answer all of these questions, you know. Just try to show that person, the Prophet is real Prophet. The Holy Quran is real Quran. The, the Islam is real religion, okay? Then, whether I understand or not, I, 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 if you ask me about any wisdom now, wisdom of fasting, and I said here, you know, which perhaps I'm uh, incapable of doing, you know, and start speaking, speaking, speaking for you, six hours, you know, about the benefit of fasting. Do you think that this is the real benefit of fasting? No. This is my understanding of the benefit of fasting. I'm speaking about my level. I'm not speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala level. 
And that's why I don't want to be philosopher, you know. But that's why we need prophets and messengers. Why? Because if the human mind capable, you know, of knowing all of these matters itself, you know, no need for messengers or prophets. Why we need prophet or messenger to tell us that this is good and this is bad? I may, by my mind, you know, know something good or something bad, but I'm not going to know everything good and everything bad. That's why I look in very uh, astonishing you know, point, you know, when the Prophet said, what did he say? He said, I haven't lived anything of the good thing, you know, without mentioning it, and anything which is not good of mentioning. I, for me, subhanAllah, what is this, you know? This is quite big and huge thing, you know, and to have a person, you know, who has limited life, you know, to explain all of them, you know, for me, this is very great thing, you know, to have. So, I don't want to, to get lost, you know, or anyone, you know, what I'm trying to say, rather than wasting your time with these people, you know, about those detailed matter, you know, just have a look, you know, come and look, you know, about these facts, you know. Is it possible to have fake prophet here? Is it possible to have fake book here? Is it possible to have fake religion? Then, if it's not fake, okay, out of my experience, you should follow him. Till, till you find something wrong, you know. Am I fake? Yes, I'm the most fake one. <coughs> Why? Because I have a lot of ideas in the past which has been changed. I have a lot of experience which was found not like this. I have, a, I have a lot of wishes which never happened. I have a lot of view about certain ma matter which has been changed dramatically. So do you expect يعني, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to please all of these wishes as you know and all of this? This is impossible. And this is not done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to guide us to what is good for us, not to please so and so and so and so. Okay? Yani, we have one professor, you know, when I was in Saudi Arabia, he came to give us a lecture, you know, about liver disease. What did he, did he say at the beginning of his uh, lecture? This is medicine, this is experimental science, you know, and we feel that it's one of the advanced fields, you know, in our life. He said, the textbook, you know, of liver disease, 200 years they used to speak about something, after 50 years, you know, all of it has been completely changed and they start laughing, you know, at, at these people, you know. <laughs> then after 50 more years, you know, they change everything, you know, and start laughing at these people and you to go for it. So, with whom should I speak, you know, in this matter? You, know? you got my point? And here, if I want to put it in another way, I'm going to put it in another way. You have in this life, Two components. One component is this is said, this is life. The other one, is, this is religion. Okay. The life, most of it, with a few exceptions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left it to people, you know. They may have their experiments, they may have their experience. You like this fruit, I like something else, you know. Uh, you love to do, go from this way, I love to go from the other way, you love this car. Yeah, and this, out of experience. Uh, if you are reasonable man, you know, you are going to choose this car over the other, you know, for certain, certain reasons. Or this road, or this fruit, or whatever. Okay? I, I, I don't have any place, you know, to argue with you about it. This is, I should respect, you know, completely your experience you know, about it. Even though, putting in mind that many of these human people, you know, they are going to be completely mistaken, you know, about their choice. On the other hand, you have something called religion. What is religion? My definition of religion is going to be relation between you and Allah. Here, you have a dominant side, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and recessive side, which is mine. I'm not speaking about myself recessive, you know, because I am believer, alhamdulillah, I am believer, but I speak about it because I know myself. I know how, how, how long I change, you know, in my look, in my ideas, in my behavior, in my speech, and you name it, you know. 
this all of this matter make me changeable and anyone change a lot you know in this life you shouldn't take his word for guarantee so when you have this relation with dominant side you know and recessive side the reasonable way you know, of handling it to have the dominant one dictate on the recessive one why because he's the most knowledgeable the most wise and you name it, you know, you know all of this perfect attribute, you know, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, I don't find for myself, you know, any space to argue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To, to say, why you did so? To, I should receive it you for, for guarantee. And this is the way the Prophet ﷺ used to raise up his companion of body. To have full confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to have any doubt. Not to have any question. And this is our name. What our name is? Islam. What's the meaning of Islam? That the real meaning in Arabic language of Islam, to have full submission. And this is, should be our attitude toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so is that good luck? Just a lot of the Muhammad